Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>thanks a lot for stopping by my name is bruce Schwartz. i'm from montreal quebec canada here's the full moon check it out guys what do you think of the colors on the surface you're going to see a lot of color in this video if you clicked on this video i really thank you for doing so thank you for subscribing or if you're just curious checking out the videos it's always about thanking my community and that's what i want to do because if it wouldn't be for you guys this channel wouldn't be up that goes for all channels creators and i'm sure that they all know that Give thanks back to the people that are helping you uh, realize whatever projects or dreams that you're trying to do. And I'm just simply trying to post raw footage. <laughs> raw footage for me is raw truth. I found an activity of UFOs on the surface of the moon. I've been documenting it, posting it, sharing it with everyone. I found cloud cover on the surface, natural or not, dust, hazes, or what ever it may be posted that documenting that to alien beings objects and things that are occurring on the surface events flashes of lights that we do not know what they are it's just a raw truth that's being posted without any information or background on any secret project or anything just posting the truth i've remained neutral and it's very hard to do so check out the colors guys isn't it incredible for me, this was my goal. The first goal was showing people that a moon was not gray. I, I so hate seeing a gray footage where you see everything looks ridiculously clouded over. You descend the exposure down. There's no need to add any color in this moon footage or any moon footage. The colors absolutely come out naturally. And why should we hide them, right? Got nothing against people posting gray footage. It's just that I don't understand what the use is of posting moon footage without at least trying to sharpen it, make it look better in appearance without actually tampering any um, surface objects at all. Because all of us know, even without a big editing skill, that when you edit objects inside of a photo, it's very hard to add any filter or enhance anything or sharpen anything without tampering with the actual structures or forms that we are seeing here that have very fine detail. So there are ways to get around that and just to post a natural shot of the surface with the exposure taken down. This is beautiful. I've heard many, I'm not going to name associations, but they say that they use filters with big telescopes, NASA. Okay. And they say that you know, yes, there are colors on the surface, but it's always with filters and filters and filters. I don't have a filter here, but it's not a wonder why people think I do because people say, well, there's no colors on the moon. No, I'm sorry. There absolutely are. The beautiful blue, green, brown the section on the top left there is where the supposed Apollo 11 crew would have landed. I've been getting some interesting emails from some people threatening me, of course. I mean, uh, I'm bound to share some of them with you because some of them just make me laugh. But one guy here is, uh, it's Edward Carroll. Of course, these are all, all invented names, right? But that's what I'm getting back as um, a name, Edward Carroll. And he says, um, if you don't effing, you effing fraud, if you don't tell the world the truth, um, I am going to tell them myself. And get a lot of disturbed people writing me an email went through over 150 emails today which a lot of you think I'm not going through emails but I assure you I am and I'm trying as hard as I can to get back to you all but there's a lot of junk uh, a lot of threats and just um, other channels um, deliberately filling up the emails and stuff like that you know it goes along with uh, the research, of course. This channel is a research channel that I've never reached MUFON deliberately. I've never reached NASA or, or big UFO channels at all to try to get my work out here. This is all my research. It's all done with my own devices and my, in my own time by myself here at home outside of Montreal, Canada. I'm finding so much truth, guys, out there in the sky. It's not that hard. And, of course, you do have to be 
inside of an area where you're getting UFO activity, of course. I believe maybe some countries have areas or provinces or whatever states that don't have UFO activity. That's understandable. But if you do, it's pretty easy to find out. Just get a, an infrared device and telescope and you'll find out pretty fast. The channel today was talking about remote viewing and what exactly remote viewing was. Well, let me tell you that remote viewers are not believed and people that do have messages or that are guided by whatever the means, a source of energy, some type of um, higher being or force that is guiding them to find things that other people do not find. Well, let me tell you, people are not going to be believed if they're declaring, like for me, for example, if I tell you that I've, you know, I'm seeing activity on the moon, even posting it, it's like, it's like that secret protects itself, no? The secret of whatever is going on up there, no matter who gets, I don't know, excited and tries to show someone something, well, they'll be talked about. They'll maybe even be known worldwide, but are they going to be believed that? <laughs> I really don't know. Look at this right there. These are all constructed objects, guys. Massive bases, you know. Um, I, I, huh. It's hard to get into this. The secret projects I talk very little about and probably always will because it's very hard to believe, you know. They say that there are many beings up on the moon and that there are different types of beings, you know. The story goes way, way, way deep into an alien-related configuration, if you want, with this world, and it's very hard to believe for many. So that's why I prefer just open people's eyes by showing them that just in front of us, right beside us, this great big moon that's there has all these colors, smokes and hazes on the surface, flashing lights, activity, um, ghost-like, alien-like, large objects just flowing around over the surface. It's a beautiful truth, and that's what I'm trying to get out there. And now, done with a big enough telescope, now we have the 14-inch, thanks to this wonderful community and the support that we've been getting. Um, these are really nice close-up shots. I really appreciate these and I love them and I'm sharing them because, don't forget guys, I share what, what fascinates me. And we can always disagree and sometimes people can say, well, you're not close enough or you're too close or, but I, I get it. I know this is too close for most of you, but there's an appreciation because I'm understanding the surface and I'm actually seeing all what is going on right now, this thick haze that's there. People are saying that we can't see the surface. Why would we not see the surface? Optics, yeah, well, optics has its limits. I understand that. Look at this object. You're not gonna tell me it's a crater. It's not a crater. Why is a crater illuminating white all around with an object in a dead center and a ridge all around the, you know? Another thing, do you notice, guys, that we see double? Analyze it. Look at any object on the surface. You're seeing it double right now. Why? I'm not out of focus. I'm not too close. I'm on the surface, looking at the surface, and yet there's like this other layer that is moving left and right. Many people uh, associate a glass dome with it. And this is what interests me. People say that, how come the moon looks like it has many layers? Well, it probably probably does. But when we analyze it, you know, just through basic common sense, we can really see that the surface has many layers. Now, I'm going to talk to you about squares on the surface. Not just squares. I mean massive outlining squares on the surface. We're going to pan into it very, very slowly right here. I love this. What is this? Endymion, I think. This We're just right on the northeastern side just coming along the ridge. Now watch um, the detail. This is, Mer oh, there we are, Mer Fecunditatis right here coming up on the bottom left that we will see. And I want you to notice how it really does look like we're in water. I mean, that is absolutely irrefutable. I'm just telling you what we say we it looks like. It really does look like it's in the water. If you tell me you're looking at a picture in the bottom of a glass bowl, it's exactly what we're seeing with the oscillation. It's not just an oscillation, right? It's it's a waviness that we see rocking, a, wa a rocking wave across what looks like across the surface a clear, of clear waters. Now, I'm not lingering on that. I'm just telling you what it appears to see. Now, what about this area? What's going on here? 
Uh, this telescope is showing me a lot more with this camera, of course, the D850, a lot more detail. So we're seeing double. Why? Why are we seeing this object that is only two spots here? We're seeing four right now. I guarantee you it's not because I'm out of focus. Every time I go back, it's what I'm noticing. We're seeing two of everything here right now. There's some type of veil, whatever it is, that is over the surface that's affecting us from seeing the uh, structures properly. And when you get into that layer in the veil, you start seeing all these mysteries, which also makes you think of glitches, um, holograms, a television set. And I'm trying to associate all this together. It's just very interesting without ruling anything out and without getting into any given theory or ancient prophecy. This is why I don't look any up, guys. I look at what's on the surface and I don't compare them to any prophecy or, or you know, myth or whatever. I just try to do this common sense and scientifically, just visually raw truth, seeing what we're looking at and trying to analyze why things are doing that. You know, a very smart person, Confucius, told us told the world at one point it's written and I have much respect for that religion. And here's the square guys on the surface. And Confucius tells us, you know, to analyze things. So what a smart guy, just analyzing nature, let nature speak to you, um, see what's in front of you, see what's, what your eyes are telling you and just not try to um, go with any theories on any type of metal or atmospheric, um, disturbances or anything just you know close your minds and stare at what you're looking at harold hughes i love you brother thanks for the very generous donations and for being a part of this community <laughs>